Hello and welcome to another Magic 2015 gameplay. Today we're taking a look at a Simic deck full of synergies. And let's start by taking a look at Chasm Skulker, a creature that becomes stronger whenever you draw cards. And in this deck there's quite a few ways to draw cards. And one of those ways is with Think Twice, which draws a card and has flashback, so when you play it first, it replaces itself, and when you flash it back, you're basically up a card. And there's a few ways to get this in the graveyard without casting the first half, so you're basically just up a card then. Same goes with Brackwater Elemental, a 4-4 for 3 mana that also has Unearth, so you can cast it from the graveyard, give it haste, and do your business for a turn. And the elemental does die whenever it attacks or blocks at the end step, but there's still a few ways to take advantage of the elemental without being down a card, really. And uh, then we also have Phantasmal Dragon, which is a very big creature, but with a pretty big downside. Whenever the opponent can target him with something, he will uh, get sacrificed. So there's not too many cards actually that just target stuff for free as uh, the Spark Mage comes to mind but not many people run him. So usually the opponent will just have to use a removal spell on him anyways. Uh, most of them are cheaper than 4 mana which means you're down a few mana but uh, usually he can get a couple of attacks in before the opponent finds a removal spell which makes this card pretty good. And there's also a few ways to take advantage of his pretty large body early in the game. Uh, then Preopon uh, does not synergize with Phantasmal Dragon, so don't use Preopon with Phantasmal Dragon because you'll just end up killing it. Uh, but does work very well with cards like Brackwater Elemental because it's a very large creature early in the game. So you can go turn 4, play the Elemental and prey upon a 3-3 for example. And uh, you can still even uh, attack with this guy, and before he gets sacrificed at the end step, fight something. So there's a lot of tiny little synergies. Um, if you need a bunch of squid tokens, for example, you could even fight the Chasm Skulker with Preopon and get those squid tokens going. And it's also nice with all our big creatures to just take out other large creatures the opponent might have. And it's very cheap for one mana. So it's our uh, removal spell of choice. Then we have Elvish Visionary, just a 1-1 that draws a card. So again, synergy with the Chasm Skulker. And uh, the body can get used by cards like Mycoloth that can sacrifice creatures to make him larger and to generate more Sapraline tokens. So we've got that going for us. And just a 1-1 one -one is just good against those token aggro decks. Just throw a Elvish Visionary in the way and you prevent a bunch of damage. And then we also have Seder Wayfinder, which has a couple of synergies in this deck. Uh, it finds more land, which is always good if you're trying to hit a land drop every turn. But he also puts some stuff in the graveyard, which might be a Brackwater Elemental with Unearth or a Think Twice with Flashback. So those are nice ways to gain some advantage in some way. And again, it's just a creature to throw in the in front of some tokens to prevent some damage. Or to sacrifice to a Mycoloth to make him bigger. And then we also have Triumph of Ferocity, an enchantment that lets you draw a card every turn if you control the largest or tight for largest creature. So this works again very well with the Brackwater Elemental with Chasm Skulker if it's grown a bit, and with Phantasmal Dragon, which is a 5-5, and with our larger creatures down the line. So just a nice card advantage engine that not a lot of people can deal with, because not a lot of people run super large creatures. So that's nice. Then we also have Cultivate to ramp us a bit. It's not super necessary in this deck, because we're only playing two colors. But it's still nice to make sure to get up to 6 lands on turn 6. Then I've already showed you Mycloth, a very powerful card that has to be answered because it will generate a ton of tokens and uh, 
can easily take over a game. Then we have Arbor Colossus, another giant creature to go with the Triumph of Ferocity. Is good at stopping creatures like Storm Breath Dragon or Baneslayer Angel. And uh, is also very large if you go for the Monstrosity. So a very, very good creature in this deck. We also have Garrix Pack Leader, which is our uh, final card draw engine, which works pretty much with all our large creatures that I've shown you, and uh, provides more card advantage to grow the Chasm Skulker, and card advantage is always great. Also works excellently with the Unearth on the Elemental, because the Elemental comes into play again and draws a card with the Pack Leader. And just a 4-4 four, for four, 5 is not terrible, so can uh, do some attacking also. Then we have Soul of Zendikar, another card that benefits from being in the graveyard if you happen to flip it with the Seder Wayfinder, as you can still activate him once. Makes 3-3 three, three beast tokens that trigger the Garrox Pack Leader, has reach so can stop annoying flyers, and just a 6-6 six, six for 6 mana that can make a beast token every turn is not bad. Finally we have Terra Stomper, an 8-8 eight, eight trample that can't be countered, so pretty annoying for most control decks to deal with. If they don't have unconditional removal it's gonna be hard for them to answer the Terra Stomper. And then finally we have a Placa Worm to gain some life, but uh, we're not really playing it for life gain, just for the 7-7 seven, seven body that also happens to gain a 7 life and uh, draw a card when he dies. Again, just a big creature to go with our pack leader and our triumph of ferocity. Then the lands, we're running 10 forests, 8 islands and 4 guild gates. This could be replaced by any of the green-blue tri lands, but just for clarity's sake I'm running the Simic guild gate because as you can see we have a little more green than blue, we want to make sure to hit those Elvish Visionaries and Satyr Wayfinders early. So yeah, that's the deck, now let's jump into a game. Alright, let's take a look at our opener, which looks pretty good. We've got an early Visionary, then two Elementals to go with the Pack Leader, which will hopefully survive to provide us some advantage. So we can keep it, a lead with, I'll go with the Island which can represent a Vapor Snag, but probably won't matter. Let's see what the opponent's up to. This deck can have some difficulties with the 4 or 5 color control value decks, as they usually go over the top of what we're doing, but uh, we'll find out if our opponent's playing one of those decks soon enough. For now, playing the Visionary, drawing a card. Cultivate's not bad. We'll have to see if we want to play the Elemental or the Cultivate next turn. If we're up against the Control deck, then getting some damage in early might not be a bad idea. Alright, let's see here. Opponent played in Arcane Sanctum and a Crumbling Necropolis. Um, if we play the Cultivate now, we can play the Pack Leader next turn and then draw some cards of the Elementals. If our opponent does have removal for the Pack Leader, then uh, we're behind quite a bit. But I think the upside of being able to play the Pack Leader before the Elementals is quite high. So yeah, I'll think I'll go for the Cultivate, but we can attack first. and grab two islands and hopefully her opponent won't have removal for the pack leader and there we go all right three mana and plays a card gomozoa which is pretty good against the elementals but it's not gonna kill our pack leader. Uh, yeah, I think I'll run it out there. We have a visionary in case our opponent plays the edict, uh, so at least we can sacrifice the visionary. Um, not too many removal spells that can kill the pack leader right away, 
there's a couple like uh, uh, we've got reprisal or augur spree but our opponent yeah our opponent could cast that next turn uh, our other option is just playing a creature and then playing more creatures until we can attack past the Gargomozoa, but that doesn't seem like a great plan, so we'd rather just go for it here and try and get some advantage of the pack leader. We can't attack with the visionary because it will die. So yeah, let's just hope our opponent doesn't kill our pack leader now. If he doesn't, then uh, we're in for some card draw. If he has a counter spell, that's fine too. Um, let's see. If he had removal, he would have played it. And uh, there's no spell I can think of that really uh, shouldn't be used on his turn. So let's see. Does if he has a counter, then playing the elementals better here? Question is, do we play the visionary first? Um, I think we do. Because if he counters that, then that's better for us. He doesn't, so let's play the elemental. And I probably think he's gonna counter this one. Right, he's not. So we get to draw a card. And now we can play the guild gate and pass the turn. Still no point in attacking here. Okay, the opponent plays Inspiration to draw some cards himself. That's totally fine. Yeah, we could attack, but if we attack with both, our opponent probably blocks the Visionary, which we'll lose. Um, and get him for 4 damage. But I think we can wait and go for a bigger attack next turn, so we only lose one creature instead of one every turn. But let's see what our opponent's up to here. Another guard Komozoa. It's gonna make it difficult for us to attack. But Triumph of Ferocity is not terrible in this situation. So let's see. We can both play the Elemental and the Triumph, but let's play the Elemental first to draw a card and see if we draw something better. Could also play the Phantasmal Dragon, which I don't hate. Um, although it would be nice to get the Triumph of Ferocity going. Hmm, not sure what's better here. Our opponent doesn't have more than one white source, so planar cleansing is not in my uh, in, it's not in the back of my mind yet. So Anger of the Gods doesn't really do much here, so I don't think we get punished for playing more creatures here. So yeah, I think playing the dragon's fine here. It means probably next turn we can start attacking, as we now have four large creatures. If the elementals die, that's also fine, as we still have this pack leader in play. So let's say go. All right, there's the second red, a wall of omens. Also pretty annoying against our uh, elementals, but we got to replace them with a card anyways, so it's not like we lost any card advantage there. Let's see. I think we do draw a card here. If we draw a prey upon, for example, I would gladly use it here. We do not. So let's see, we can still flash it back and play the Triumph, so I think I'll do that. Could have kept up the Think Twice to bluff a counter spell, but I don't think that's really the way to go here. And I think we'll end up playing the Triumph before, flash, uh, before playing the other Think Twice here. So let's see, question is now, do we want to attack? Our opponent could have something like an Augur Spree here, which means we pretty much lose our elementals and perhaps don't even get to draw a card anymore with them. 
On the other hand, it's not like this board state is going to get much better. We can maybe get in for 4 to 9 damage here. Yeah, I actually think an attack's fine here. The elementals trigger. And let's see how our opponent responds here. I think though if he did have removal, uh, he probably would have used it on the pack leader by now. Let's see, damage happens, okay, and let's play the triumph, does he counter it? He does, alright that's fine, we still have a think twice in hand, so let's say go. Hope our opponent doesn't kill our pack leader. And then next turn we can still have two elementals with unearth. Alright, our opponent played a charm breaker devils, which will provide him some card advantage in the long run. Right now he has inspiration and dissolve in the graveyard. But let's start this turn by unearthing the elemental and drawing a card another dragon let's see we have five six mana so we can unearth another elemental and play another elemental seems fine let's unearth first And a Satyr Wayfinder is not bad. But I think we'll just end up playing the second, uh, this third elemental rather. And I think we'll just go for another all in attack here. And I'm fine with attacking with the Visionaries as well, as their opponent's likely gonna block our bigger creatures with the Gargomozoas. And if our opponent wants to trade with the pack leader, that's fine. We do miss out on some more card draw here, but I don't think he would have traded with the Charm Breaker Devils. All right. And let's then just play another elemental here. And draw a card. Our opponent's at five, which is pretty low, but it does have two Gargamazoas against our three creatures. So let's see, what does he get back? Gets back a Dissolve. And is he gonna play anything this turn? At some point he has to start attacking us because we have a lot of card advantage going, so he's not necessarily gonna win the long game plays a mercurial <laughs> all right decides to copy another guard komazoa could have gone for the charm breaker devils but he's opting for the defensive card instead did not leave up dissolve so we could try and resolve something this turn let's see here um I would like to draw into some of our trample creatures. Um, what's the best course of action here? The attacks aren't great since their opponent now has three guard gomazoas. So I think I'll start with playing another phantasmal dragon and drawing a card. Another pack leader is not bad. Our opponent still doesn't have more than one white source, so planar cleansing is not an option. So I don't think we get punished for playing another pack leader here. And then just playing the guild gate and saying go. Because now we have... Draw another card. Alright, so my cloth is another way to try and break this board stall. So let's say go here, since attacking doesn't make any sense. 
And next turn we actually have a pretty good attack setup, as we now have five large creatures. Putin decides to cycle traumatic visions, getting an island. And what does he get back? Inspiration, that's fine. So he has Inspiration and the Solven Hand that we know of. Probably just played his island that he got. So four unknown cards. And he's working with eight mana. So Cozy Like is still two turns away at least. So no need to worry about that. Could play something like a Runescar Demon to find a removal spell. I'm actually surprised their opponent hasn't played any removal spells yet. Because this dragon should have been dead a long time ago. Didn't really expect it to survive this long. If we ever find some prey ponds, we can start clearing these guard gomazoas. Yep, and our opponent makes another guard gomazoa. So... Perhaps he's playing some sort of defender deck? Who knows. So right now we have five large creatures to our opponent's five large creatures. Uh, does mean that he would have to lose his Charmbreaker Devils, which isn't bad. We also know our opponent has Dissolve mana up. Or actually, yeah, he does have double blue there. So um, we have to try and bait the Dissolve. So we can try and resolve our Mycloth. Um, let's see. I don't think Cultivate's really gonna work. Perhaps just playing a Think Twice here to try and hit another big creature or a Terra Stomper wouldn't be bad. Alright, Chasm Skulker will probably get the Dissolve out. Does not, alright. Uh, in that case, I think I will just... Let's see... Play the Wayfinder and keep up Think Twice mana. But I do think we can go for an all-in attack. Since that means our opponent would have to... Lose his Charmbreaker Devils, which is giving him a lot of card advantage. And next turn we can still um, unearth the elemental for another attack. And let's see if he blocks with the devils or not. If he doesn't, he's dead. Alright, decides to trade with our pack leader. And takes one from the visionary. So, yeah, let's just play the Wayfinder here. Alright, opponent's thinking about the counter. Alright, we milled a Colossus and a Prey Upon, which would have been pretty good. Alright, I guess the timer went, but we did not play our land yet, so that's a little unfortunate. Opponent plays the Charmbreaker Devils, another one. And let's make sure to flash this back. So we also grow our Chasm Skulker, another dragon. Alright, I think we can bait the dissolve with the dragon here. Alright, opponent doesn't counter it. Interesting. Then let's keep growing our skulker some more. And unearth the elemental. And this should be enough for lethal. Alright, I don't think we need to think twice here, so let's go for an all-in attack and see if this works.
block 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 we're actually a couple points short here but again our opponent will lose his devils All right, trades for the pack leader, which makes sense. Okay, damage happens, opponents down to two life. And I think we'll go for a cultivate here, just to get rid of our lands. There's not many left. And say go. We can even discard a couple of lands here. All right. So we didn't have enough mana to also play the Mycloth, but our opponent did leave up a Dissolve. Inspiration, that's fine. Opponent has six mana left. And we have lethal on board. So, let's see here. Um, I think we can attack first and then play our Mycloth and our Soul. Opponent likely has removal now for one of our dragons. Huh, inspiration instead? Is this last card a shock? It's not. Then uh, our Wayfinder and our Elvish Visionary are gonna get the job done. Well, there it is. Interesting game. We got to draw a ton of cards with our pack leaders. Opponent really didn't have any removal somehow. And we managed to win the game. Alright, let's move on to the next match. Alright, let's take a look at our opening hand. Which is super awkward with no green sources. Although we do have a think twice. And a decent amount of green sources in a deck. Uh, I guess I'll keep it. Just because we can play think twice on 2 and flash it back on 3. By then we should have found a green source. And otherwise this hand is reasonable. A lot of early plays, some ramp. So any big creature we draw we should be able to cast. Alright, I guess we'll play the guild gate here. And uh, be happy with it. Could have gone for the think twice instead. But then we're just postponing the inevitable unless we drew a forest next turn interesting our opponent leads with arcane sanctum and then planes into Viscopa guild mage and hmm we could play the brackwater elemental it's not great if our opponent has an edict um I think just cultivating here is actually pretty good also. Um, yeah, none of our plays are really great. We could play Visionary Guildgate, but then I would rather ramp up with our Cultivate in case we draw a 5-drop next turn. So let's get to Forests here. And say go. And then next turn we can probably just play the Visionary and the Elemental if we don't draw anything good here. A Cruel Sadist is not that great, but it does stop our Phantasmal Dragon pretty easily, should we draw that. Okay. Chasm Skulker is not bad, as we can play a Think Twice as well. So I think I'll go for it. Could also play the Visionary actually, 
which puts more creatures on the board, which is a bit better against our opponent's creatures. Okay. And say go. Could have tried to ambush the cruel sadist by uh, casting the think twice and growing the skulker, but uh, it seems a little risky. I would rather get the counter on it right away, so in case it does die, we get value from it. Okay, and let's see here. Think now. If we grow the Skulker even more with uh, Think Twice, we could run into a reprisal, which might be awkward. Um, but I don't think we have a lot of better plays to make here, so I think I'll go with an attack here. If our opponent does block, we have the Think Twice. Opponent doesn't block, so. Let's cast one thing twice. Hope our opponent doesn't have a reprisal. And I don't think we use the other thing twice. I think playing the elemental here is better. Get some more creatures on the board. And play the guild gates. And say go. So unless the opponent finds a way finds a way to exile the Chasm Skulker. It is gonna give us a nice advantage. Um, opponent doesn't have any islands yet, so the island walk is not gonna be super relevant. But a bunch of tokens is still pretty good. If we ever draw a Mycloth, for example, he can eat up those tokens and make even more. So, haven't figured out what the opponent's trying to do yet. He played a Guild Mage, which is good in a life gain deck, but we haven't seen any life gain yet. And our opponent decides to leave. Plays a Radiant Fountain, which does go with the life gain theme. But apparently has a pretty bad hand. There's a Reprisal. Killing our Skulker leaving behind a couple of squid tokens and let's see we can play the wayfinder and cast the elemental we can also flash back a think twice at some point um, I don't think attacking with all our one ones is good yet because our opponent can just kill one with the guild mage for free so I would rather build up a bigger board state so let's just cult, cast another Cultivate and play the Elemental. Okay. Some more forests. And play the Elemental. And I think we'll attack with this one. Since I'm okay with trading it with the Guild Mage. We got in for 4 damage. And let's see what our opponent has here. Attacks with the Sadist, which I'll take. Opponent gives it lifelink. Alright, Swift Justice. That's fine. So, the opponent used the second ability on the guild mage, so we basically lost 6 that turn. Okay, our draws haven't been that great. Uh, let's uh, flashback a thing twice first, in case we draw something good. Alright, that does qualify. Um, let's attack first. If we get to resolve the pack leader, then next turn we can unearth two elementals, which is pretty good. So hopefully the pack leader survives.
could have been more patient and uh, waited until next turn so we could have done both in the same turn but our opponents likely to have instant speed removal so that wouldn't really matter opponent attacks with the guild mage I will triple block if our opponent uses a sadist to kill one of our guys alright it's got a swift justice instead which does give first strike so kills all our tokens but that's fine since we now have the pack leader going and our opponent doesn't have removal for it we do lose 6 to the 2 guild mage activations however which is quite scary but here we can unearth draw card and unearth again and let's play another one and attack with everyone we have two blockers and our opponent should not be able to kill us yet opponent decides to jump okay goes for another attack which I will block and cloud shift is perfectly fine we do lose the elemental but we can unearth it next turn with the pack leader anyways A lot of land so far. All right, now we're talking. We did not find a prey upon, so we won't be able to kill the opponent this turn. But we can still attack for eight. Could have attacked with the visionary also but the opponent can still give the guild mage lifelink so he would not have died anyways okay let's pause the turn a janice pride mate a little late to the party and Terra Stomper just because yes please let's draw one more card and another card and I think we're done all right, dragon. Well, let's attack and call it a day. All right, I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this gameplay and feel free to leave more requests for certain decks in the comments below. And as always, have a nice day.